Welcome to the next episode of Endoscopy Essentials. Uh, at the moment, we almost appear daily with uh, exciting news. Uh, yesterday, uh, we had a special on the new colon uh, versus fit screening study in The Lancet. This morning, again with Michael Brettauer. Welcome, Michael. Hello. We're interviewing one of the stars of colonoscopy with huge experience in screening and everything else, Douglas Rex. So, Michael, would you like to take over? Sure. So, hello, everybody, and welcome, Doug, to this um, podcast, which is, which is going to be a very brief, you know, early um, reaction uh, recording with you. Um, so, so, we all uh, have learned about the study in The Lancet, which came out uh, yesterday night, comparing fit screening to colonoscopy screening the study from uh, spain tony costells as the lead author and we have been looking forward to this publication now it is out and doug what are your first reaction with regard to the results comparing the two screening methods well the first thing i would say is congratulations to the investigators because i you know it's uh it's a landmark um achievement to uh complete this first study comparing fit and colonoscopy that's looking at an endpoint of <clears throat> colorectal cancer uh mortality so <clears throat> it's it's a very impressive uh achievement um i think that um from the perspective of someone organizing a national program, particularly in an area where there's very little penetrance of colonoscopy, such as Spain, uh, that the results of the study, you know, suggest that um, it, an invitation to fit uh, is just as um, effective in terms of cancer reduction as an invitation uh, to colonoscopy and uh, with less colonoscopies overall performed. So I think that in that setting, um, this is, um, you know, it's a, it's a very informative result. I don't think that the result uh, is going to have much impact um, in terms of screening around the world or in the United States, because I think most organized programs have already decided that FIT is the preferred uh, way to perform screening from a cost and feasibility standpoint, whether or not they have um, the uh, resources to pay for colonoscopy or the resources to perform uh, colonoscopy. And I think that um, the perspective that you take to the study is, is, is very important. And I think, uh, you know, a perspective that is very important to look at is that of patients. How would patients uh, view the results of the study? And I think one of the most important results uh, of the study is how did patients who actually underwent colonoscopy screening compared to FIT screening, the per protocol uh, analysis, how did they fare? And I did not, I have not seen the appendices to the study uh, yet because they're only referred to um, in, in what I got from you, Michael, you were kind enough to send me the, the study last night, but I did read your editorial. And in the editorial, I saw that colorectal cancer mortality um, in the um, group that actually underwent colonoscopy was significantly reduced. So this was a secondary analysis. But, you know, in a situation where in the United States, where we already have huge penetration of colonoscopy and we have a choice, I think a lot of people are going to be interested in which is the most effective choice. I was a little bit disappointed to see that result buried in the appendix because I think it's a very uh, important result, even though it's a secondary analysis. And it actually suggests that that uh, patients who underwent colonoscopy had a, had a had a lower risk of colorectal cancer mortality uh, compared to those who underwent fit screening. So that's my initial take. I, I don't think uh, as as remarkable an achievement as it is, I don't think it's going to have an inch, a huge impact. And I think um, the results are going to be viewed in the context of whether or not organized screening is already uh, in place in the country or in a healthcare system, which it's not in the United States. Um, and that's part of the reason that we use colonoscopy a lot is because we do opportunistic screening. And I realize that opportunistic screening is not as, um, you know, considered as the best way to do screening compared to organized screening, but it's the reality for much of the United States. And for us, I think the actual per protocol analysis is very important. 
I understand that. So let me just, Thomas and Doug, um, this is very interesting. Let me just, for, for, for the people who are watching, just three sentences about the results, because not all of you have seen the paper or have seen uh, the podcast um, from yesterday. So basically, what you just elaborated on, Doug, are in terms of colorectal cancer incidence and mortality, the two tests have been similar in the intention to treat analysis, where everybody who is randomized so this was a randomized trial, obviously. Everybody's randomized to colonoscopy, one colonoscopy, or five uh, fit rounds every other year for 10 years. Collective incidence and mortality was the same. Incidence was about a little bit more than 1% in each group, and mortality of colorectal cancer was about 0.2%. Uh, so a low risk, which is which is great for patients, of course, which, which we have been seeing in other trials. Um, case fatality of colorectal cancer is, is way down from 10, 15 years ago, which is, which is great, but also which is um, difficult for studies like this to show a difference when the risk is so low. And then, Doug, you elaborated on the per-protocol analysis, which, which will be in the appendix, uh, so they're not immediately um, uh, um, recognized uh, for the readers who don't have access to, to the supplement to the appendix of the Lancet. There, there is uh, I would say a small difference, but 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 although a difference in favor of colonoscopy for some of the endpoints. However, I think in fairness, and I think the investigators described that in the main paper, it's always hard to do good per protocol analysis because obviously there is bias uh, by self-selection, a lot of other things, and especially for for the team in Spain, it was difficult because they had so little information about the people who were randomized because they were literally randomizing people off the street. Uh, everybody who was living in these areas were randomized and they didn't know much about about the folks who said yes and, and, and even less, of course, for the folks who said no to the intervention after they were randomized. I think it's difficult to disentangle that. Let me ask you, Doug, you... you so, okay, let, let me tell you what I thought when I saw the results. I was surprised because I thought uh, that colonoscopy would be better than fit in terms of incidence. I was uncertain if I had guessed uh, 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 about mortality. I think fit is, is, is probably a good test for mortality, but the incidence part, so removing all the polyps, which we do every day, I thought that would probably lead to a superiority of colonoscopy in terms of incidence, which, which, which it did not, at least not in the main analysis. So do you have any, any comment on that? Uh, dog, is it too early or is it that maybe ADRs were too low? What do you think? Uh, it was a little bit hard for me to tell what the what the ADRs uh, were um, in the study because in the uh, group that was invited to colonoscopy, actually a very substantial fraction of the participation was um, in the um, was by fit. Uh, so about twenty percent of the invited population, the colonoscopy group actually underwent the procedure and um, the rest of it, uh, the other 11%, I think, uh, was actually fit screening. So I tried to do a little bit of calculation of ADR. I, I really couldn't uh, put it together exactly what it was from the reported prevalence of advanced lesions and um, and just non-advanced uh, lesions. But I, I could also not tell that there was a problem with detection. It could be that it's um, too early. Um, again, you know, some of the differences uh, that are, you know, bring fit up here appear to be the result of higher adherence. I mean, there hmm. there is higher adherence to the invited arm uh, in the fit group than there is in the colonoscopy group. We do see the results of the detection of advanced adenomas, which was higher in the colonoscopy arm than in the fit arm. And um, this was true actually in the very initial study that we saw from colon prev uh, in the first round of, of screening. And I would expect that, that the higher detection of advanced lesions and removal of those lesions would eventually lead to an incidence um, uh, you know, improvement favoring colonoscopy, but it could be too early uh, to see that. And again, I haven't seen the appendices to look at them uh, in detail, but, you know, we know from very old uh, data 
that um, said itself uh, leads to an incidence improvement. This was this was shown in the University of Minnesota uh, trial yeah. through the detection of advanced lesions. So I think that you know in in, in the end we'll probably see uh, a difference there, but uh, and maybe it's too early to tell. Thank you, Doug. So Thomas, uh, coming back to what impact does this have on on countries or regions on healthcare systems? And Doug, you have been elaborating on that. Um, you know, in the U.S., you have opportunistic screening, a lot of colonoscopy screening, probably the trial will not have a lot of impact, but but in Europe, I mean, most countries in Europe have fit screening programs, but some countries uh, have also colonoscopy as an offer to the population. And one of these countries uh, is Germany, where you are practicing, Thomas. So what do you think um, this trial will do with the German approach, the current German approach to to collect with cancer screening, which is very much dominated by colonoscopy. Uh, yeah, well, partially. So I would really agree to Doug. It's a very friendly study for both sides at the end. So the colonoscopists could focus on the per protocol, even if this is difficult in a country where the system is established. And that's probably well, e easy to defend. Um, the fit countries will say wonderful. That's what we have assumed initially, and that, that's confirmed. To be precise about Germany, uh, patients are invited and they get a leaflet, information leaflet. We, we briefly mentioned that uh, already with Tony, offering both approaches so pa patients can pick. And uh, yeah, Doug, I, I would have a, a further question to you about adherence. Um, in Europe, they're mostly invitation-based programs. Will this ever be possible in the US or is the healthcare system too difficult and divided? Um... Yeah, I, I don't think there's probably likely to be a, a national um, federally run uh, program that's invitation-based for a while. We have, of course, seen this in some of our larger um, healthcare systems, Kaiser being you know, the best example. But um, I do think that something that you are mentioning here, which is the 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 issue of choice, is um, a concept that is you know it's it's pretty heavily favored um, in the U.S. and how choices are offered um, is also frequently uh, discussed. So you have the the thing of offering both choices, uh, fecal based testing and uh, colonoscopy. And then, uh, so the multiple options where you present the pros and cons of both, and then so-called sequential testing, where you offer the test that is most effective first, and if the patient declines, then you go to a test that is useful, but perhaps not quite as, as effective. And I think that these data can support uh, both of those again, but I think that, you know, the, these trials, the way that they're done, where you invite patients only to one test or the other test, is not really representative of how things are going to happen in a lot of countries. In the U.S., there's going to be either this multiple options approach or the sequential option. And I think a lot of people would like that. They would like to be offered a choice of screening tests. So that will be a topic for further studies. I, I think so. And I can just tell you before I yield back to you uh, to wrap this up, Thomas, because this was only a very quick first reaction, uh, a, a, a video podcast. I think here in Norway, people are happy today. The government is happy because they decided some years ago to go with fit screening. There was a lot of discussion. And I think, as you just said, Thomas, I think this is probably I haven't talked to anybody yet this morning. Uh, studies just out, probably a confirmation that this was maybe a correct choice. But I also agree with Doug that um, offering different different tests for different for, for, for the population would be very interesting going forward. So I yield back to you, Thomas. Yeah, so thank you very much to you both. It was a very interesting discussion what that study uh, could do. I think we'll come back later. And um, um, I think at the moment there are a lot of exciting publications. So at the beginning of next week, Michael and I will be back with uh, new guidelines on AI and colonoscopy. So stay with us and thank you to everybody.